This feast in the Transfiguration or from today's passage in the Gospel is a very important moment both in the life of the Church and in the formation of the Apostles. For our Lord appears in his transfigured glory to show of the things to come, but he appears between the prophet Elijah and also Moses, that is to indicate he, he takes the central position to indicate he is the fulfillment of all the prophets and of the law that was first given to Moses. And Peter, in his love and zeal for the Lord, wishes to stay there and remain. For Peter has not yet quite understood that mission to which he has been called. And so he does not ask the Lord to do this for a bad intention, for the reason he asked it is based on his love. But the Lord knows very clearly that Peter has a greater mission than to remain there on the Mount of the Transfiguration, for he is to descend from that mountain and under the, and under the teachings of the Lord and under the formation of Christ, he was to become the vicar of the church. And so the apostles and St. Peter are forbidden to relate this event for, it had, for, the time of, for the time of our Lord's crucifixion had not yet been fulfilled. And it is after that time that the apostles will wait and be strengthened and ultimately St. Peter will begin that mission of the church that will continue until the end of time. That mission to bring the good news to all the peoples, to Jews and Gentiles, to believers and to non-believers, to every form that to, to every human person that God will that that, that God will create uh, until the end of time. And so, Peter is asked to come down and to remain silent, to simply stay with the Lord, allow himself to be formed by the Lord, and ultimately, after being strengthened by that greatest mystery in which the Lord rises again from the dead after his crucifixion. Thus, thus definitively declaring an end uh, to the war for, the, for, huma for humanity. For with Christ's crucifixion, death, and resurrection, the war truly has ended and Christ is perfectly victorious. And yet, throughout the course of time, each and every battle will be raged on an individual basis. For each and every one of us must struggle with our own faults and failings and the attempt of Satan to lure us <coughs> from the kingdom of God into his false kingdom, his anti-kingdom, his kingdom that is contrary to everything that is good and everything that the Lord has taught. And so we are to be strengthened, most especially to be strengthened through her who became the teacher and the mother of the apostles, and hence she truly is the teacher and the mother of all the members of the mystical body that is the ever-blessed Virgin Mary. For the mystery that would truly be revealed to the apostles upon the crucifixion, death, and resurrection would be the central place of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the life of the Church and the life of the apostles. Indeed, as many of the saints have pointed out, in Our Lady, our Lord is completely victorious. In Our Lady is where the war is ended, for she is the one who has never been at enmity with God and by, by God's grace, Per, by, by God's grace, has persevered in that love from the first moment of her conception, and she does so for all eternity. And so, if no other soul was saved, God can complain, can, 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 God can take to himself complete victory, complete victory over all that is evil because in the Blessed Virgin Mary, he is loved as, as all creatures are called to love the Lord and he is completely victorious. And so being our mother, she wished also that we could join her in her victory. And so let us strive always to stay close to the mother of God, especially in our day and age when it seems so much is arrayed against every member of the mystical body because everything is arrayed against truth and the eternal truth that Jesus Christ is. All that he came to teach us, 
to lead us back to, the, to union with the Heavenly Father is being disparaged, blasphemed, and sacrileges are being committed day in and day out. And it is especially at these times and in these places that we must always and everywhere strive with every fiber of our being, every faculty of our soul and body to bring about some expression of the love of God in the kingdom of God. But in times like ours, we must realize that ultimately our efforts mean nothing because it is out of human hands and hence it is in the hands of the Lord. And so he will stop what is presently transpiring in the world at some place. How he stops it will depend upon the cooperation of the members of the mystical body. And so let us truly cooperate in that most extreme way, that is, by consecrating ourselves to the Mother of God so that if it be possible, this, this kingdom, this, this world, this anti-world, this, this all that, that is contrary to God may be overcome by the love of the Immaculate. That love that she showed for God and that love that we are all called to imitate and all are called to strive to so that, in, so that instilling again in the hearts of men and women a love of God, the culture of death may, dis, may disappear in the culture of life, that is, the culture of Christ may again reappear in our world. For that is the one thing that separates us from all those who are opposed to the kingdom of God. They always and everywhere have to bring about the triumph of that kingdom through human means in cooperating ultimately with their leader, Satan, who is the enemy of Christ. But we have something greater because we have the supernatural reality and we have the Son of God who defends us and so Truly, if we understand the mystery of Christ, we come to understand the mystery that God can, can renew the world in an instant of time and God alone can convert sinners. And so let us strive always to do all things so that we may persevere in our conversion and most especially also that in our conversion in loving the Lord and his most holy mother, we may cooperate in their mission to convert the whole world to the kingdom of Christ so that all working out their salvation in that in that in that fear of God and in that trembling which St. Paul speaks of, that we may all come to know him in that most especial way, that is, by way of the beatific vision in the life to come. And so our hope always and everywhere is rooted in our belief that Jesus Christ will rise, that Jesus Christ did rise from the dead, and that if we die with him, we also too will rise with him and then attain that for which he created us simply Put, it is a very simple formula. God created us to love him, and ultimately, the expression of that love cannot be f fulfilled in its entirety in this life, for it is a love that is rooted in the eternal love of the Blessed Trinity, and so for the creature to fulfill that purpose for which God created him, he must also enter into that eternal kingdom where he can love and praise his good God with all the angels and all the saints and marvel at the wonderful things that the Lord has done for us and that great gift of his mother that he has given to us in this life in order that we may be happy with him in the life to come.